Hello, uh, welcome to Talking Movies. I am Garrett Weston Thomas, and I'm an indie filmmaker. And I've been at Penn TV for a little while, let's just put it that way. Um, you may notice that uh, we're not in your typical uh, set right now. Um, and that's because we're, we're trying a few new things right now. Um, where we're not in just a digital set per se, we're even uh, going to experience talking to a digital character right here. Can you tell us who you are? Hi. Good morning, Dave or Garrett. That sounds a little bit uh, HAL 9000 on, on us, but. Uh, I'd say in the, the year of uh, Blade Runner 2049, that's uh, probably okay. I came into existence the night of December 23rd, 2017. Can you tell us uh, the true purpose of why we're even here in the first place? The collective we has seen at least 20 pictures in the past year. Do you remember how many Best Picture nominees that were released? Including the nine Best Picture films up for nomination. In alphabetical order, those are Call Me By Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Okay then, that's a lot. Uh, were there any surprises, do you think? In statistical analysis, uh, The Shape of Water has the most nominations at 13. That is just one away from the record at 14 with such films as Titanic uh, and La La Land. I see. The next in line is eight uh, with uh, Dunkirk and then seven with three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Six is tied with Phantom Thread and Darkest Hour, each earning that. And then there's five apiece for both Lady Bird and Blade Runner 2049. Zeroing in on directing, because I know that's uh, something I love to do, um, uh, who uh, might you have uh, really liked in terms of uh, doing some directorial moves this year? I, I know I personally liked uh, Guillermo del Toro uh, for The Shape of Water. It's a brilliant film. Uh, it really takes a very romanticized uh, period uh, piece look at the 1960s Cold War era. Um, but it, it finds uh, a uh, mute uh, lady and uh, what they're referring to as a creature. Um, but uh, other people who can't seem to find a connection with this creature just uh, want like nothing to do with it and they are vehemently against it. But uh, she's uh, already having difficulty communicating just with uh, any verbal language. So. Uh, she's uh, finding other methods uh, on a natural basis and is able to develop a communication with this creature and uh, is able to connect to it. And uh, it's uh, just, you, you have to see this movie, but there's one specific shot that just totally blew me away. And she's just even looking through a window. It's kind of a rainy day on a bus. Uh, but if you just look at that one single shot, it defines the entire movie. And so uh, I think Guillermo del Toro is the one to beat. He won Best Director at the Golden Globes. He just uh, won Best Picture at the Producers Guild Awards just a few nights back. So uh, pay attention to him. Statistically speaking, there 
tend to be three categories that a picture needs to be nominated in to be up for best uh, winning best picture. And those are picture, directing, and editing. Uh, and this year, there were only two that uh, fully satisfied those needs. And those were The Shape of Water and Dunkirk. Um, there's a lot of stamina behind the film Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, um, but it's not nominated for Best Director, and that's uh, perhaps creating an Argo situation, where it's not like in years like where Gravity won Best Director, but 12 Years a Slave won uh, Best Picture. Uh, Argo also wasn't even up for Best Director Ben Affleck, but it still won Best Picture. Same with uh, Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, so that situation, if there's enough gall behind it, you know, it just won Best Ensemble Cast at the Screen Actors Guild Awards, and it uh, won Best uh, Drama at the Golden Globes. So, uh, who's to say? Uh, we still had uh, The Shape of Water win Best Picture at the Producers Guild. So I think those are the, the two really big films uh, to beat. Uh, however, Dunkirk, it's finally Christopher Nolan. I mean, come on, it's Christopher Nolan. I mean, that title alone has not one but two, but three powerhouse names behind it because it has uh, Frances McDormand, uh, who's already an Academy Award winner, and she's very much looking like a potential two-time winner for Best Actress with this film. Um, and then associated with her by marriage, she's got uh, the Cohen brothers. Um, and they're uh, one of the very, very few team uh, that have one best director uh, together for No Country for Old Men. I recall this being the year of the woman with uh, Greta Gerwig, Mary J. Blige, with two nominations, uh, being even the first woman nominated for acting and song, Meryl Streep, goodness, with 21 nominations for acting, outdoing herself yet again, and Oprah, if you recall, even the Golden Globes. Yes, yes, yes. That's still only the fifth time in 90 years uh, that uh, a woman has been nominated for Best Director, but uh, we finally can fill a full single hand, um, but this one hand. We're still looking for double digits, folks. But uh, Lady Bird is a great, fantastic film. Uh, Laurie Metcalf and Saoirse Ronan, who's, by the way, in her third nomination now. Um, they are uh, a wonderful cast. Um, and uh, it's already, I was thinking when I saw this film uh, and I, Tanya, uh, it was basically between uh, Laurie Metcalf and uh, Alice and Janney. Uh, they're both uh, motherly figures, but uh, one plays one that uh, loves their daughter so much, but they have opinions that they just can't uh, escape from. So they're, uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, bypass, uh, whereas Alice and Janney, uh, there really is no love. I think she's more just trying to have her daughter succeed so much. but. She's also kind of playing this redneck figure, and she's smoking like a train, and there's like violence involved, but I won't get too much into that. But uh, yeah, it's just the motherly dynamic is what comes into play in both movies. One film that I was also really happy to get a chance to see theatrically was uh, Baby Driver. Um, I'm a big, big Edgar Wright fan, um, ever since uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. 
Um, that's what I saw first theatrically, and then I started watching some of his previous works. Uh, if you've ever, if you've ever not seen Hot Fuzz, drop everything and leave now. Um, but uh, yeah, these are some of the the, the most well written dialogue uh, movies uh, you could possibly see. But uh, Baby Driver specifically is uh, really well edited and very fast paced. Um, all of his films are very well edited for that matter. My favorite three films this past year were Wonder Woman, Blade Runner 2049, and the animated film Your Name. But I'm going to throw in the favorite score to Johnny Greenwood's Phantom Thread. He was sadly overlooked for their willy blood 10 years ago so he finally gets his due this year yes johnny greenwood so then why is it that so many movies tend to be these uh, sequels and remakes and uh, these mass productions uh, you know you have fast and the furious eight for goodness sakes uh, was that even one of the movies that you guys saw this year? I keep on a strict, wholesome, rich film diet that rarely ever contains such dreadful things. Would you be able to tell us any statistics about uh, this very episode? Between the time that we started taping and the time I stopped, the nominations were actually announced. If only my eyes were the tally lights. I understand this guy's plight. Just wait to see what I can morph into next time. I see. Well, on that vividly awkward note, uh, I uh, think it's about time we wrap this up. Uh, so, uh, thank you for attending this, uh, and I think uh, it's now up to the viewers to decide what they think the true best picture ought to be for the 90th Academy Awards to be on March 4th, and uh, let's hope that they now go out and watch all of these movie trailers that we showed little clips of in their full length. Not to mention just the films themselves. I know a few places if you live in the San Francisco Bay Area. So uh, have fun watching movies and uh, cheers to that. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed what you just saw, and if so, you can contribute to our Patreon site. Uh, any little bit or a lot can help us uh, for further uh, funding and the effort for these. Uh, anything you saw, whether it be our green screen, our character animator, uh, uh, any of those efforts, uh, all the, the viewage of any of the films that we're trying to promote, uh, all, of, all of the efforts uh, go into that. So. Um, it, any of that helps. So enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, subscribe if you can and uh, uh, take care for now. Uh, thanks. Bye.